Imagine thousands of people suddenly coming to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Men and women, children and elderly, poor and rich, the socially fit and the social misfits, drug addicts, gangbangers, pimps and prostitutes, even the leader of Antifa. Could you imagine these people coming to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Stuff like this happened in the first century church in the book of Acts uh, in Jerusalem. And could that really happen today? Hey everyone, I'm Jeremiah Porter, host of Project Lighthouse. If you're not yet a subscriber, I want to encourage you to do so and click the bell icon in order to receive notifications of future content that we put out here on this channel. Today I am wrapping up our four-part series called Make Church Great Again. If we wish to see Acts 6-7 become a reality in our day, we need revival. In Acts 6-7, it tells us that, that uh, the number of believers in Jerusalem was multiplying rapidly, that the word of God was spreading, and even a great number of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. And we see that these Acts 6-7 results are uh, they are the result of Acts 3 and Acts 4, where in Acts 3, the apostles make the bold decision that someone else is going to need to take care of a programmatic problem so that, Acts 4, we will remain devoted to prayer and the ministry of the word. I like to put it this way, Acts 3 plus, or Acts 6, 3 plus 6, 4 equals 6, 7, the kinds of results that we see in 6, 7. Well, if we're going to see six, seven results in our churches today, we need revival. We need the powerful uh, awakening to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit to awaken us and cause us to be the people of God in every aspect of our lives in this culture for such a time as this. No longer can we tolerate cultural Christianity. It must be all or nothing. It's time to make church great again. But how do we do that? Well, there is the possibility of a great future for the church if we will, like the church we read about in the book of Acts, in Acts 6, commit to doing church God's way. If we will commit to doing church God's way, then we will uh, have the possibility of a great future as the church, no matter what comes our way as a nation, as a country, no matter how free or not free we are to worship God and assemble together in worship, prayer, and study of the word, we can have a great future. In Acts chapter 6, we read a story, a, a, a story of just powerful gospel transformation. If you have your Bible, turn there with me to Acts chapter 6. And I'm going to read this for us here, beginning in verse 1. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are full of the spirit and wisdom, and, and we will turn this responsibility over to them, and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Well, this proposal pleased the whole group, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenaeus, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. This was a great church that was making a great impact and had a great future 
ahead of them because of their commitment to doing church God's way. Now, a great future as a church does not mean that there won't be any problems. That is not at all what it means. This was a great church in Acts chapter 6, but it not without its problems. It had challenges. It had programmatic problems. It had things that needed to be figured out. It doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that everyone's always going to be happy in, in our church with the way things are. Uh, and that's why it's important that we work really hard to make sure that we don't make church about our preferences and desires, but rather we make it about the glory of Jesus Christ. There, just because we're a great church with a great future, living a great future does not mean that there won't be problems. There will always be external threats to the advancement of the gospel because not everyone is in favor of Jesus Christ. Not every country, not every leader, not every political system is favorable to the gospel. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a great future. A great future does mean that despite all the problems internally and externally, lives are being transformed by Jesus Christ in ways that can only be explained by the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. To experience this kind of a great future requires the following commitments. There must be a commitment to one another. And this is, this is something that we see happen in Acts chapter 6. There was a commitment to one another. When some of the widows were suffering because of neglect, there were people who were watching out for them that, that came along their side and, and decided that they were going to help to see that the problem gets fixed. They were committed to one another. Uh, secondly, it's a church committed to obedience to Jesus. To experience this kind of a, a great future, requires that we are a church committed to obedience to Jesus. And where do we see this obedience to Jesus here in Acts chapter 6? Well, we see it in a love for one another. There was a, a love and a concern for those widows that were being neglected. And even when the problem was brought to the apostles who themselves did not actively jump in to solve the problem, there still was a love for those widows in seeing that, yes, that's a problem and it needs to be addressed. So there was a, a love for one another that showed an obedience to Jesus Christ. There also was the obedience in the apostles to stay committed to their priorities that Jesus had given them. And so we see a church committed to obedience to Jesus, committed to one another, committed to obedience in Jesus. Thirdly, we got to be a church committed to prayer. And this was the bold decision that we see the apostles make in Acts chapter 6. There was a devotion to prayer, a commitment to prayer. We are not going to let so many other things crowd into our schedule that we don't have time to pray. Prayer will be a priority. And I believe that priority is not just for the apostles, but it's for all of us. Because to no other activity in all of Scripture has God promised more blessing than to that activity of prayer. And so for all of us, prayer must be a priority. Apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Spirit, we can't do anything. And so we've got to stay connected and committed to prayer. Number four, we must be a church committed to the Word of God. We must be a church committed to the word of God. God's word is truth. God's word brings us life. God's word leads us in the right directions. It convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit works with it to convict us of sin, to guide us, lead us, and direct us, to encourage us and fill our hearts with hope, to remind us that God is alive and loves us and is with us and Jesus is coming back for us. God's word must be central. We must be committed to the word of God. So to have a great future, we must be committed to one another, committed to obedience to Jesus, committed to prayer, 
and committed to the Word of God. If you want to watch more content like this video, check out the previous videos in this four-part series, Make Church Great Again. You can find them by clicking the link in the description below.